flowing over her life, Lord. Each one here, Lord. We ask, Father, blessings upon their family, Lord. We ask that you'd help us to keep her eyes, Lord. You said when all these things, Lord, come to pass, look up. Our redemption's drawing nigh, Lord. And we want to be in that bride without spot or wrinkle, Lord. Loving and looking for your return, Father. And always occupy until you come. So we thank you, Lord. We commit the next service to your hand. Touch our pastor, Lord. We thank you for the messages of encouragement that he's been giving us, Lord. We know they're coming from the throne, Lord, and we just praise you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. And everybody said amen. amen. All right, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise this morning. Good to be back, and uh, appreciate everybody's prayers, uh, calls, thoughts, and everything. Battling that stuff for, for quite some time, but uh, uh, one of these days, not only me, everybody here, we're going to be free from everything, every ball, every chain, every sickness, every burden. It's all going to be gone one of these days. Can't wait. Looking forward to that day. And, and like I said, it doesn't matter to me. It's raining out. It's sunny out. I'm here to do one thing. And that's to lift up the name of the Lord. I'm here, I'm focused, and uh, kind of leads into what the message is, is going to be today, Lord willing. But when, when you come to church, I believe you ought to come with a purpose. And uh, uh, if it's anything other than, than, than praising God and getting in and, and getting with the service, then you need to get refocused. Um, so... Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, June 10th, not this Thursday, but June 10th and Thursday from this, a week from this Thursday, we're going to open back up our prayer meetings and everything. Looking forward to that. Um, somebody said, well, what do you guys do? I mean, how long can you really pray? And it, it, it puzzled me. What do you do all this time? Well, we pray. <laughs> we pray. And I, you know, I don't know about other people, but to me, um, prayer is exciting. How's it exciting? Well, you're talking to somebody who has to answer all the things you're praying about. That's how it's exciting. And um, so looking forward to that. Uh, remember remember uh, that when you pray. Remember our church when you pray. Um, remember my wife this morning. She's been up all night long. She's, she's actually getting worse. Um, just hard pockets everywhere, stomach, side, backs, back. Um, she actually had a, a doctor appointment this week, and uh, the doctor she was talking to said, are you sure? She said that they didn't leave something in there when they sewed up the incision. She's convinced that they did. Um, that would explain a lot. Uh, one of her uh, incisions busted open, actually, and it, it, it looks like a, you know, you buy a new shirt or something, you got that plastic thing that sticks in there with a tag on it. It looks like one of them that shot out. And it's hanging out there about like that. And I said, don't pull it out yet. But uh, she's just in agony. So I need everybody to pray about that this morning. So um, as we go to prayer, who has an uplifted, uh, uplifted hand has something they want us to pray about? Sister Gloria. Mike, I go this week for a bone density test a complete from top to bottom. I go in three weeks, I go to an uh, ENT. Both of my eardrums are completely impacted. Just keep me in your prayers. Amen, we sure will. We'll pray for you this morning. Anybody else? Brenda. Yeah, I want to thank you, praise God, for, you know, for your prayers, for my sister, and she's going to have surgery that Monday, but they didn't do it because of uh, uh, oxygen, so they did it that Tuesday. And when they were doing surgery, she died. But God brought her back. And I thank and praise God for y'all prayers. And I just couldn't talk to her. But that waist they got up, she was walking around and everything. So I just couldn't talk to her. So she's doing fine because she might go to rehab next week. So I hope I shall continue to pray for my family. And please pray for me. Amen. I sure will. Thank you, Lord. Uh, remember Brother Dwayne? I think it was last week I talked to him. Uh, he was getting fitted for his uh, prosthetic foot, and I imagine by now it's on. So uh, I believe we'll be seeing him shortly. Been a rough road uh, for that old boy, but the Lord's pulled him through it. Anybody else? Just Liz. 
I just thank and praise God this morning that my son is doing really well. He came home yesterday mm -hmm. and he's doing really well. But keep him in prayer because he has to go back in eight weeks and have this done again because it's uh, the stents they put in, they say they're not very sufficient. But uh, they said he it's a possibility he might have to have it done every three months. So pray that this thing will hold and he won't have to, because it's a lot, because they go right down your throat to yeah. do it. So just pray for him. Amen. He sure will. Yeah. Jerusalem. Amen. As always, remember them folks in that part of the world, Sister Chloe. Uh, yes, my daughter, she's coming up from Kentucky. Uh, her daughter's graduation, so just pray she has a safe trip. Amen. And sure my enough. husband. Amen. We're touching. Get a hold of them. Uh, pray for the young girl I used to care good for. She's been in the hospital for two weeks and they put a colonos a bag on her side and she's just having careful issues with it. Uh, she got such a sweet, I saw her yesterday, childlike faith and uh, Lord it just uh, just pray that she'll get out of the hospital quick. Amen. Remember that. I just want to give God thanks and praise. You know, I've been praying that the Lord would send somebody to Paul that would reach him. Well, he's he's up here now, and um, he said to me, he said, Mom, he said, I got this new guy that is working with us, and he said, and boy, he said, he is really on fire for the Lord. He said, he just witnesses and witnesses every single day, and he said, he said, well, Mom, you know how I am when it comes to that. He said, with me being the foreman now, he said, they can't, the guys came to him and said, look, said, you're going to have to say something to this guy about all this witnessing because it's starting to get on our nerves. And Paul said, he told him that, he said, now look, he said, you know how my mom is. He said, I can't do it back something. on you. Do it right back on you, <laughs> He said, you know how my mom is. He said, I was raised up under that. He says, if I, if I tell him that, something would happen or something. <laughs> so he said he had to go to the guy in a nice way and say, look, you know, can you control your talking? It's starting to get under everybody's nerves. But I just want to thank God that he he answers prayer. He sent somebody, and I'm just going to pray that he'll keep, and keep on doing it, and I'm hoping that he'll listen and get himself right with God. Amen. Good to, good to hear. So look, God knows where you're at. And you've never gone too far back to where he can't get a hold of you. And uh, I tell people all the time, hey, if you don't want to hear it, don't bring it up. That's right. You know, especially at work. I mean, if I got to hear your dirty stuff, you're going to hear my Jesus stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Remember me and I've been under the weather last week. And I need the prayer bed. Amen. Thank you, uh, Amen. Remember this morning. I miss anybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, this is really the first time we've been in the actual church since this COVID mm -hmm. mess. And um, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. And it's good to hear other people praise the Lord and what the Lord's done for them. God's done a lot for me in my life. And um, I think as long as you're saved, you should always have something to say for the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, we're good to have you. Give them a hand. We've given her a little bit. just going to go here in a minute. And uh, uh, I always tell everybody here, make people welcome. Don't make them feel like a visitor because if you're in the family of God, amen, yeah. you're not a visitor. Yeah. You're in the family, amen. All right, anybody else before we gather? All right, if you're able, let's gather around the altar. If not, bow your head at your seats. Remember all these things in prayer. They're important to these people.
let's stand and get ready for our morning worship as our singers come.
chapter Luke 21. I was going to read verses 7, 8, 9, but I think I'll back up, grab verse 6 also, and what chapter? 21. Luke chapter 21. Yeah. I'm going to read verses 6, 7, 8, and 9. And um, you know, sometimes you will walk through things and walk through dry places and walk through valleys. As a child of God, how many of you ever been there? Amen. And uh, at times, it seems like you can't hear from God, you can't feel anything from God. But last few weeks, I've been, you know, Lord, where? What am I going to preach? What am I going to say? What am I going to do? I hear Brother Pyle time after time when he got up and I talked to him. I said, man, you must have had a while to study on that. He said, Brother Mike, I got that when I got on the platform. <laughs> And I was like, man, so I hope you don't ever do that to me. Uh, it's been happening like that a lot, but uh, I can say the last two days, um, it's just been one after another, just boom, 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 boom. God knows what you need, and God knows when you need it. Amen? Yes, amen. This morning, let's start off in verse 6, <clears throat> chapter 21. Listen, right here, verse 6 is the words of Jesus. And he said, as for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign where thou be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Let's say amen to God's word this morning and 
God was still giving this to me this morning uh, when I was sitting back in the office reading and studying and uh, meditating. And He gave me these words to give this morning. And Lord spoke to my heart this morning. He said, let's remember why we are here. Let's all remember why we're here, why we were put here. What our job is. Everybody has something to do. Everybody has a call. Everybody has a ministry of some sort. Let's remember why we're here. Why did we walk in the doors this morning? What was the purpose? What is our mission when our eyes open up every morning and the Lord's blessed us with another day, we shouldn't squander our opportunities that God has given us. You know what? There are people that we come in contact with and that we pass every day who need what you have. Remember why you are here. And I picked this scripture this morning, verse 9, where it said, But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, and that word commotion, it caught my attention. It means confused, noisy disturbance, or a distraction. And when I saw distraction, it reached out and, and it grabbed a hold of me. And there's no question about it. Things are continuing to snowball and get worse and worse and worse each and every day. And I believe that times and days are going to get worse and worse and worse. Brother Mike, why can you say that? Why do you say that? What are you basing on? I base everything off of the Word of God. Yes, yes. Evil men waxing worse and worse, the Bible says in the last day. Yes. Who controls everything here on this earth? Evil men. Yes. Evil men create situations. And situations control areas. And if evil men are getting worse, then times and days are going to get worse. But you know what? I realized through one thing, through all of this, and I told somebody this morning I didn't think that 2020, I thought that was about as worse as it could get, but this, this year has been by far worse for me. But through it all, I can still lift up my hands and look up to the heavens and say God is still God. For the same God that is on the mountaintop is the same God that is down in the valley. And listen, is it on the mountaintop where we get our soul restored? No. It's in the valley where God restoreth my soul. If you love him, raise your hands and praise the king this morning. That word commotion got my attention. And it seems like every day, it's something new. Every day, it is something different. Something bad coming out. I don't even watch the news anymore. If I want to see the weather, I'll look it up on my phone. And commotions are ruling the headlines of every single day. Now listen, Satan, your adversary, your adversary, the devil. Amen. Let's just get that plain. Let's just get that out in the open. Now listen, the neighbor who you may not get along with is not your enemy. The one controlling them is your enemy. Your adversary, the devil, listen, He's doing a great job today. He's putting in a lot of overtime, making and creating a lot of distractions that the Lord knew was to come Amen. in an effort 
to get you all out of balance and get you all out of focus? Listen, if thy eye be single, the Bible said thy whole body would be full of light. And today, listen to me this morning, there's a lot of commotions, there's a lot of disturbances, there's a lot of distractions that Satan is putting over the airways that he's putting into your life, he's getting into your families. Listen to me this morning, he's causing a lot of commotions to try to distract you and this this is why God spoke to me this morning. Remember why you are here. Because Satan is going to try to distract you. Get you hung up somewhere over here. Make you lose focus on the most important thing. And listen to me, the most important thing today in your life better be God. I said it better be God. Thank God for your husband or your wife. But without God, you have no husband. You have no wife. You you have no family. You have no life. It's God in all. And God needs to be lifted up. God needs to be praised. God needs to be blessed. If God has done something for you, you need to let your neighbor know. You need to let the church know. My Lord, you need to let the world know that all good and heavenly blessings come down from God above. I can stand here this morning through all the motion that has filled my life this year. Hallelujah. And I can say that I can still see him. I can stand here, good God. I can say this morning that I can still hear him. Oh, praise God. That's how I know I'm one of his. That's how I know I'm in the sheepfold and he is the shepherd. Why? Because his sheep know his voice through everything that's going on, through every battle that you've been through through every hard time that you've been through. Listen to me. Remember why you are here. I said remember why you are here. I think we need to remind the devil this morning just why the church is here. Let me tell you a little bit about the true church of God. It's an institution that is ordained by God. Oh, hallelujah. And it's made up by people like you and I. Who have been forgiven of their sins Who's had their sins removed As far as the east is from the west Oh hallelujah All oh, my sins have been forgiven My sins have been covered They've been washed in the blood of the Lamb Let me ask you this morning Have you been to Jesus For that cleansing power Are you washed in the blood Of the Lamb by God They don't write them like this anymore Oh Good God, I said they don't write them like this anymore. And oh, I want you to know there's still a fountain that's filled with blood. That's drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Oh, hallelujah. Have you been plunged under that fountain this morning? If you have, jump to your feet and throw your hands up and say, oh, God, I want to thank you for saving me. God, I want to thank you for cleansing me. I was on my way to hell, but you reached down and pulled me out. Lord, and gave me testimony. Gave thee a burden testimony. My Lord, we wonder where testimonies come from. They come from the test that you go through. And what a testimony it's going to be one day. Oh, hallelujah. When we reach Jordan's River, when we cross the other side and we lay down our cross for a crown and say, God, I made it. God, I made it. Your grace was sufficient. I don't care if everybody's turning their back on you. Grace is sufficient. I don't care if you're facing a deadly disease. Grace is sufficient. I don't care if people are walking all over you. Grace is sufficient. I don't care if you lost your job. Grace is sufficient. Come on, raise your hands. Praise the King. Satan is trying to do a number on the church trying to do a number on the members listen smoke screens clouds and, and all these things that he's throwing to try to get you to lose focus of really what's important and all it takes is just a momentary lapse Jesus 
all of his days never forgot why he was here we use the example of Elijah's Jesus as a child knew why he was here stayed behind traveled in groups at that time family members Jesus stayed behind probably got his parents pretty worried and upset when they found him what are you doing why, why, why did you do this did you not know that I must be about my father's business remember why you are here remember why you are here remember why God ordained you and remember why God anointed you somebody look at your neighbor and say I'm anointed of God <laughs> my Lord say it I'm anointed of God say it again I'm anointed of God Thank God that you are. And I see a lot of, you know, you hear a lot about distracted driving. Knowing you're out there, you're, you're, your sole focus should be getting to point A and point A to point B safely and back. And I've been in vehicles where there's been a lot of commotion. And what does that do? It makes the driver lose focus on really what is important. I'm preaching to you. And through everything that is going on in life, and everything that is going on in this world, people are falling by the wayside each and every day. The Bible says men's hearts failing them for looking after the things that are to come upon this earth. But listen to me this morning. You better bear down. You better buckle down. And you better not lose sight of the cross. You better not lose sight of Mount Calvary. Satan is trying to deceive. And Jesus said it in these scriptures. Take heed that ye be not deceived. Listen to me this morning. You better make sure that you're ready to go, y'all. But you better make sure, hallelujah, that you're not getting distracted. Oh, for there's a lot of things that are making their way into people's hearts and lives. They're attaching themselves to them. And they're getting their focus off of what's really important and, what's, and who is really important. I sat there at work this week. And they, they, they sent us out. And we've got this huge area of land that, that's abandoned and grass was getting up there like this. So we, we got to knock this stuff down. So they put us on our machines, mowers, tractors, and sent us out there, knock this stuff down. Huge job. And while I was out there, and, and the machines are so noisy, so noisy, and the cicadas were so loud. And it was very, very miserable. I mean, I look, there's spiders everywhere all over you. Stuff flying in your face, in your mouth. 90 degrees. And I'll be honest, it was a lot of commotion. You couldn't even hear yourself think. And all of a sudden, through all of this, I had the Lord, and this is where this thing really broke out. I had the Lord speak to my heart, and this is where this message was born at. Praise God. Through all of the noise, through all of the irritation, through all of the danger, through all of the irritation, the noise, the, the, the mower, everything, flood, the, the spiders all over you, through all the noise of the cicadas, I had the Lord speak this to me. He said, through all this commotion, you can still hear my voice. <laughs> I told him I'm shut up the voice. Through all of this commotion, you can still hear my voice. And honest to goodness, listen to me, everything in that moment disappeared. I didn't care about the spiders on me. 
I didn't care and I didn't even hear the noise of the machine. I didn't hear the noise of the bugs. I didn't, didn't hear or see any of that. Because through all of that commotion, I was able to focus. Hallelujah. Son, you can still see me. You can still hear me through all the disturbances. You can still see me and hear me through all the commotion. Hallelujah. And that lets me know this morning that the true church does not have to let the commotion get its eyes off the prize that lays before us. Listen to me. We don't have much time. We don't have very much longer. Oh my God, to get the gospel message out that he could still see him. Who is that out there? My Lord, who is that? Is that Jesus out there? I may not be able to hear him. My Lord, I know he's right here. Why? Because he is a very present help in the times of trouble. There comes Jesus. I said, there comes Jesus. I said, there comes Jesus. I said, here comes Jesus. My Lord, I wish you could hear what the Spirit is saying this morning through everything that's going on in your life. Hallelujah. It may seem that you'll never see the light of day again. My Lord, you may be down. You may be depressed. But through all of this, here comes Jesus. Through all of the commotion and turmoil, here comes Jesus. I said, here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. My Lord, in one of these days, what I've daydreamed about, I've dreamed about it in the nighttime. I've thought about it during the day. What is it going to be like, sister, when the trump of God finally sounds? My Lord, you want to talk about a commotion? I said, you want to talk about a disturbance? The graves are going to be disturbed. There's going to be a commotion everywhere. Oh, hallelujah. People are going to be People are going to be leaving this earth. My Lord, what in the world happened? I'll tell you what happened. Oh, hallelujah. God looked over and he said, son, it is time. Go get the redeemed. Go get the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so this morning. Are you redeemed? I said, are you redeemed? My God, if you're not ashamed of it, shout out. you dare let the rocks and trees cry out for you they're not saved they're not redeemed but you are 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise Him this morning. Let's lift your hands and praise Him this morning. Isn't He good to us? I said, isn't He good to us? Don't lose heart in the middle of the fight. All it takes is just a little distraction. A little bit of commotion. I'll never forget years ago we're up at a big department store in Delaware and my son's 19 now I think he might have been 3, 4 somewhere along that age and my wife had the girls and they were over across the store in some other section and me and him were standing there looking at something he had a ball carrying around I'll never forget it and we were standing I was looking at something looking at a shirt or something and I looked down, I said, don't go nowhere. I turned around just for a split second. Looked at his shirt, turned back around. He was gone, and all I seen was that ball just bouncing. I thought, mm. Any of you ever experienced anything like that is the worst feeling that you can ever experience in your life. Something got my attention just for a split second. I turned around and when I turned back to focus on what was really important, it was gone. Let that be a message for you. It was gone. And all I saw was that ball, but I said, oh no. I grabbed my phone, called my wife, said, get a hold of store manager, tell her what's happened. I said, I'm going to the front of the store. I ran to the front of the store, scanned the parking lot. I just stood there standing guard. See if anybody's going to bring them out. And the manager had done a great job, locked the store completely down. And it was only five or six minutes, but those were the longest five or six minutes of my life. And what's going through your head at that time? What is going on, man? Am I ever going to see him again? Whose hands is he falling into? But here's one thing that I do know. That no matter where we go in this world, no matter how we may get separated, how many miles may be between us, that God is still right there. He'll be there when you can't get there. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all of a sudden, after about five or six minutes, just that much, that little bit of distraction. See what it can cause. That's all Satan needs. That's right. And here come one of the store workers with him, had him around, had him by the hand, I believe, and he was walking, he's bawling and crying. And he said, I said, but what happened? Where, where did you find him at? He said he was in a clothes rack crying. Aww. And I never did. What did you do? I don't think I ever got to answer. Why did you wander off? Still, though, this ain't the time for the conversation. I'll get back to that after church. <laughs> but do you see what is going on? And I believe that God laid this on my heart for a reason. Listen, I talk to people all the time. Talk to people in the ministry all the time. People with churches, and there's a lot of churches who are struggling really bad right now. Amen. Membership has fallen off. They are barely keeping their doors open. You may look around this morning when we have 35, 40 people, but you know what? It's a lot more than a lot of folks have. And I know that we have been blessed by God. And I know and I believe in my heart that through all the commotion, yes, Lord. that through everything that is going on, God is still going to use this as a lighthouse yes. to those around it. I believe God has still got His hand, hallelujah, upon us here. I believe God still has a plan, hallelujah, through all the commotion and all the disturbances, hallelujah, I feel like Job when I am tried. I shall forth, I shall come forth as gold. Glory to God. When I am tried, I 
shall come forth as gold. You know what? Nobody likes to be the recipient of something bad. Nobody likes to be the recipient of hate mail, hatred, or anything like that. But you know what? If you suffer for the Lord, you are blessed. And I get it. I'm not kidding you. It's almost weekly I get hate mail. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. Almost weekly, I get hate mail. And they rag down this church. Beat down this church. And I'm thinking, what if they hate me so much, I guarantee you they're still watching on Sunday morning. <laughs> but Mike knows. And if we suffer for the cause of Christ, happy are you you know what that lets me know it means we're doing something right blessed are you when you are persecuted for my name's sake hallelujah there is a blessing they are heaping upon me in this church every time they send hatred our way guess what god blesses listen to me this morning it may make the devil mad it may get him upset thank god that he's upset with you praise god that it lets me know that we're rattling his cage. It lets me know that we got his number. It lets me know that we're walking in the word. And when you walk in the word, you walk in the spirit. Because Jesus said, my word is spirit. And it's weekly. And you know what? I, it, I got, I've gotten so accustomed to it that I don't even pay it any mind anymore. Listen to this one. Did you know I'm not saved? I'm not saved and I need to step down. Yeah. You're not saved. You ought to be ashamed. You ought to step down. You need to get things right. Why are you watching me if I'm not right? <laughs> Come on now. Thy own lips testify against thee and not I. That church had just keep beating it down and beating it down and beating it down. But you know what? I'd rather have the presence that we have here. Yeah, we may have some leaks. Yeah, we may have some things crumbling. But you know what? God has built the house. And except God build the house. They that labor, labor in vain. You can have your nice things. You can have your crystal cathedrals. Just give me the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Just give me that man named Jesus who hung on an old rugged cross. That's what I'm after. I'm after your soul here this morning. I'm here to make sure, praise God, that everything is right and that you're ready to meet the maker. Now, I think a lot of focus... A lot of times gets put in the wrong things in the wrong areas. Sure, sure I want to grow. Who doesn't? But you know what's more important is growth in here that you can see in people. That is what is important. And as we get ready to close this morning, listen, I know that people have a burden. and I know that, that, that people are being weighed down. As a prayer, you can feel it. I can feel it all over the place this morning. How many of you devil, the devil been talking to? He has me. I'll be honest with you. A couple of hands. He's been talking to me. And the older I get in God, the less I get alarmed about things. And the more I learn to just let go and give it to God. The more I learn to just trust in Him. The more I learn to just lean upon Him. Let Him fight your battles for you. I feel a burden here this morning. 
real burden here this morning. I believe that God has sent some folks here to get delivered this morning. You know that commotion can get you all caught up and make you fearful and we've been talking about it, preaching about it, giving you examples. But you know what? There is something that you can do about it. There is somebody who I can introduce you to this morning who can peel back everything that's been weighing you down. I've had him do it. Listen. See, why do we as children of God have to endure such things? If the Lord never allowed you to go through something, then you would never know of his delivering power. You would never know of the great delivering power that he possesses. It's too late to tell me that it doesn't happen. I've experienced one too many things in him. I want to let you know this morning. And I've been telling you, man, the, the, the scriptures I've been clinging on to lately. One comes to my mind now in particular. Everybody knows that weeping may endure for a night. My oh, Lord, in the comfort in the word of God. Weeping may, and, and you know what I call that word may, it may endure. God may step in through the middle of the night somewhere and say, this thing's over. But if he doesn't, and he allows the next morning to come, guess what? Joy comes with it also. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you love him this morning? Hallelujah. You stand with me this morning. Every head bowed and every eye closed. As they get ready to play and sing something softly. If you're here this morning, you're out of sorts. Don't know whether you're coming, don't know whether you're going. Brother Mike, you don't know what I've gotten into. You don't know how bad I've messed things up. No, I don't. But he does. If you're here this morning and you're lost and undone without the Lord, just ask you to do one thing. Just slip your hand up, take it back down. Anybody, anywhere. If anybody here would like prayer this morning, I want you to come up. We're going to believe God to deliver you this morning. No matter what it is. And Brother Mike, I've tried. I've tried. Well, let's keep on trying. Let's keep on praying.
for help, thank God for doctors and nurses, but they can only go so far. This is where we're at this morning. If you're a believer this morning, I want you to stretch your hands this way. I want, to, I want you to help me pray. Sister Powell this morning. Hallelujah. So do I. Hey, let's pray and get this thing. 